and we are live with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Kurt Erring. We are down in Trackman Holler. I am at uh, Kurt Erring's house, and you are listening to the uh, truth portion of the Houndsman XP podcast. And today I'm lucky enough to be joined by uh, my friend, Coon Hunter, uh, legend in the sport, Kurt Erring. Kurt, how are you, buddy? Just fine, Josh. Uh, appreciate you coming down. Awful nice day. One thing about me and Josh, we hunt against each other. We like to kill each other, but we're always friends when we leave. <laughs> that is a fact, and that's the way it's supposed to be, ain't it, Kurt? That's the way it's got to be, you know what I mean? I, yep. Some people don't want to understand me and figure me out. I'm a little crazy and nuts, but I'm into what I'm doing, you know. Uh, just the way I've been raised, I was always raised, if you're going to do something, be all in or all out, you know. Uh, things has really changed. A uh, lot of money in these hunts today. Hounds have changed. Uh, we're all raising pups, trying to do things, make things work to better ourselves. And everybody's got different opinions, you know, on these dogs today. Uh, the deep and lonely thing, we all like that. Uh, they're having these three-minute trees now. I think you're going to see a lot more dogs tree and coons around you. Uh, I can see that coming. I can see the independence still a plus like it's always been. I always love a dog to work off their own head. Uh, have I had everyone ever done that? No, some of them I had to work on, but most of my stuff, uh, they was that way. You might have to help a little bit here and there on some females and things. You breed these dogs and you keep them around females and heat a lot, and you'll get some Some dogs take it good and some don't, you know, just like we was when we was growing up. Hey, before we get into all that, you're going into it. You, man, you're just running off on stuff i i want to talk about all that all right that's cool we got an hour we got an hour we got, we got, an hour we got plenty of time we got no rush time. i like that and there's most of the guys that are listening to this are going to know who kurt Erring is that's but, cool but there's also uh some bear hunters up north in wisconsin there's some mountain lion hunters out west and bear hunters out there that don't know who kurt Erring is so give me i want to know Matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna describe Kurt Erring first. Okay, go for it. Kurt that. Erring is a treater, a uh, treeing walker, breeder, and fancier. He's a legend in the sport. You've been around for a long time. You hunt UKC. You hunt PKC. You've owned multiple stud dogs. You're one of the most notorious stud dog owners in the history of the walker breed. And you didn't always hunt walkers, but you've been hunting walkers for a long time, and you'd hunt anything that could win. I have no doubt. Yeah, but, uh, you can't be colorblind, can you, Josh? No, you when can't. I was growing up, my dad said, don't lie to yourself. We all know what we're hunting. And he'd said, if you don't lie to yourself, he said, you'll have some good dogs, you know. He said, if you lie to yourself, you'll never have nothing. I mean, your dad, your dad was a smart man. Well, he, <laughs> he, he taught me a lot of stuff right, some stuff wrong. You know yep, what I mean, Josh? Right. He thought I, a lot of you, I guarantee it. I liked your dad and Mr. Jerry and me lived not too far from each other there for quite a while, and I loved hunting with him, and uh, he was – the only way I can put it, Kurt, is that he was a character. Yeah, he was one of a kind. He, he was, was an Italian. And he told, me, he told everybody, he said, uh, Jerry, you only got one kid? He said, yeah. He said, I, I damn sure don't want no more like Kurt, and I didn't see no profit <laughs> in him, you know? He had a way with words. He did. He was a wordsmith. Yeah. That's he, he was. He was a wordsmith. He liked them quarter horses, you know, and mm -hmm. I'd ride a mule. He had them high-dollar horses, and people come over, and I'd have a good mule tied up. He said, man, that don't look good. I said, well. I'm going to coon hunt, you know what I mean? Use my stuff, you know. That's just the way we was. But uh, How did you get – did you start hunting with your dad? Did you start hunting, you know, usually at a young age when you yeah, started? Yeah, I, I was raised up around Highland, Illinois, and Greenville, Illinois. I was raised with Bill Ritchie. Bill Ritchie had Rockwell Dawn and Hammer and was the first man to have a litter of Grand Night Champions off old Dawn. And then uh, we had – one of the greatest of all times, tree dogs, Banjo 2. One of the Mormons, man, Larry uh, Foster, Feaster up there had him. Great guy. And my dad always told me only way a dog could hard or tree any harder than Banjo 2 was to have two heads. And uh, <laughs> he was a tree dog, you know. And uh, I had another deal when I was growing up with my dad. We'd, our dogs didn't get along back then, and I knew if I ever had some dogs and stud dogs to raise them, I was going to get where we didn't have to have six trucks, six dog boxes to go down the road. You know what I mean? And uh, he said, oh, yeah, you'll probably get them like that, but they won't have no guts, you know. But uh, you can have dogs that will get along, you know. Uh, 
they got to today and age. You know, there's nothing worse than going out with your best buddy and eating his damn dog up, you know? Mm -hmm. I had a friend in St. Louis come up and hunt with me a lot, and I had a little female I won Walker Days with two years in a row, Aaron Singh and Sammy. I learned two things. She was off of Ken Maynard stuff out there in the mountains, coon treer. But she didn't get along good with others. And I kept her in the house, and I spoiled her. And my dad kept saying, just keep rubbing on her. He says, for long, you'll eat one of your buddy's dogs up, and you'll find out what that's about. And sure as shit, that happened. And me and Mark, he drop kicked her, and then I was mad at him. And <laughs> she needed it. And uh, But here's the thing. I, I figured out right then that wasn't the way to go, you know, because I about lost a good friend. And listen, there ain't no, regardless these dogs ain't worth getting into it with somebody like your best friend. It, you yeah. know, it ain't worth it. I You're mean, right. Me and Buzz talked about that years ago. And uh, Kevin, and we was pretty crazy, you know, but he said, hey, listen, we're never going to get into it over these dogs, Kurt. And he's one of the far, and he's been a great man to me and uh, looked after me on a lot of things. And, of course, I need that. I can, I can tell you one thing about me. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. You know, I... I guess I'm trying to say I move first and think later. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a, that that's, ain't the way to be, Josh. You know well, what I'm saying? I know it ain't the way to be, and I'm a I'm a think first and move later kind of guy. But Kurt, we it takes all different kinds, and we, we everyone says, "Oh, Kurt did this and Kurt did that," and I say, "Look, Kurt is just Kurt." Yeah, I said, and I love him for it. I said, I hate him for it sometimes. I said, but 99 percent of the time, I love him for it. He is what he is, and, and you always know what you're getting. And that's important, and I think that's one of the reasons why you may have had some all the success that you've had with these dogs. Well, I appreciate it. Well, here's the thing. My dad was very clear-spoken. He was an Italian. And he always told me the best way not to have misunderstandings was to have understandings, Josh. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes I should have a filter, you know what I mean? But if it's upstairs, it's coming out my mouth. That's why I got <laughs> these scars on my head, you know. Uh, but I'm 60 years old now. And let me tell you something, that age will calm you down. And and I sure needed it. And my granddaughter has been a blessing for me, too. Uh, my daughter had some health issues when she was about a year old. And I told her and my wife, I said, hey, I ain't got a job. I'm sitting here breeding these dogs. Track man was about two years old and was hot and cold sweat was hot. I said, I'll take care of that little girl. Hell, Josh, they looked at me and said, hell, you can't take care of yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, today she's 14. Tall as I am, taller, and we're tight. You know she's what I mean? I sweetheart. haul her all over the world. She's a sweetheart. She's been a blessing. Yeah. I mean, she's got some brains. She don't open her mouth unless she thinks. That's the way I should have been raised, you know. But but the way I look at life, it goes fast, you know, and there's no rewinds. And take care of that family is what I'm trying to say. It's very important, you know. You're right. Because I couldn't have done none of what I've done without having my wife, my daughter, my it's team. Everybody that helped me, Buzz, Kev, all it's everything is team effort. Yep. And uh, a lot of us, we get out there and our heads get swelled up. But good Lord's got a way of humbling your ass. I guarantee you. Yeah. When you were when you were young and you were hunting with your dad, did you guys competition hunting right off the bat? Yeah, my dad, he didn't like them competitions hunts. Yeah. So I went with Bill Ritchie, and we had a club up there at Brownstown, Illinois. Still there. And uh, I hunted with some crazy boys up there. I mean, and they taught me some stuff that was absolutely right. Ben Trombie and and just, hey, the Stoke boys, uh, Carl Stokes, you could drop him out of an airplane in the middle of the night with a book of matches and a pocket knife. Never been there, and I can promise you, that man right there, he's coming out of there. <laughs> he was one kind of, hey, they talk about Bill Stokes and all them boys is all great. Bill uh, Carl, Bill's dad was named Pudge, was his nickname, and Carl and then Johnny Ray. Now, them was three guys there. I'll tell you a little story, Josh. I was a kid, and I had a dog called Kurtz Hammering Jr. And I told my mom, I said, hey, Mom, my dad was going to a horse sale. I said, I'm going to go buy a pup tonight. Well, a pup back then was 300 bucks. was a good one back in the day. So I had an international ton truck and uh, had a fuel tank on it. So I put a dog box on it, and I called Carl, and I said, Carl, I'll be over. So I go over there, and we hunted. And old Junior, he'd treat a possum and a couple slicks and a coon. And I said, Carl, I think I better come back and try him one more time. He's wanting 2500 for him at nine months old. And this is back when 2500 was something. 
So I go back the next night, and I use up all the gas in the tank. I don't realize this till I get over there. <laughs> well, I buy this dog. I write a check for twenty five hundred, and it was my mom give me this check, and she signed it and everything. So I buy him, and on the way home, I run out of gas. So I walk to a guy's house, and I got five gallons of gas for him, and I was probably close enough to get home back in them days. And I got home, and I come home. I said, Mom, I got that pup. She said, well, that's good. Let's see him. Well, I got him out. My dad was at this horse sale, like I said, and she says, man, Kurt, that looks like that's more than a pup. I said, yeah, he's nine months old. She said, uh, he cost about, what did he cost? I said, well, he was a little higher than 300 mom. <laughs> she said, really? How much higher? I've got to tell your father here in a little bit. I said, 2,500. She liked to have a stroke. <laughs> she goes off. Before my dad gets home from this horse sale, this is before we had cell phones, somebody done told him, hey, that kid of yours went up and bought the highest price damn pup in the world up there. <laughs> And my dad come home, and he says, hey, I hear you bought a pup. We're going coon hunting immediately. Right after we load 23 fat hogs in this 20-foot trailer to cover that check. I said, okay. We loaded the hogs, took them to town, got back. We went hunting. My dad heard that dog make one tree. He said, Kirk, that's the cheapest thing you ever bought in your life. That's right. And uh, the rest was history. Uh, he was a nice dog. Rep but did he reproduce? Not really. We what, tried. What makes a dog reproduce? What? I mean, we've all seen it. You've seen it. I've seen it. All these guys that have been around this game have seen it. Some of the best coon dogs in the world don't reproduce. Some of the most common coon dogs in the world do reproduce. Well, here's the thing that I've noticed. A lot of these man-made dogs, they don't reproduce. All right, because they're man-made. And a lot of people today... They breed winners to winners, which we all like that. But a lot of these winners are by very good handlers that know how to train one, set them up. They do this, they do that. I was raised where the one that was running loose on the farm out in the woods that was treat, that was called naturals. And my dad said, go get them naturals and bring him up here. And the ones that's sleeping in the shade tree up here, he said, give him to the greatest man of all. I said, what are you talking about, Dad? He said, you want to hunt them naturals. Well, I always thought I knowed more than him, but you, you know how it works out. Oh, yeah. Later on in life, I found out he was pretty sharp, yeah. you know? Old Jerry was pretty sharp. I remember going over there when me and your dad was hanging out. Uh, he was older. He, he wasn't hunting much, but he had them two step boys. What was the I, there's young kids then my gosh they were little bitty yeah they was and, and, and he, they was they was good kids and Jerry would have a dog out there that he had bought or sold or traded for or whatever and he was getting ready to resell and he'd say well load them boys up and just take that dog he goes that's a good coon dog and that older stepson I'd ask him I said is that a good coon dog he goes if Jerry says it's a good coon dog it's probably a good coon dog and I'd turn that sucker loose and I was hunting good dogs at the time too Kurt and they were good coon dogs jerry yep. would turn loose something that would it would be first or it would be by itself one or the other it would have its coons it was it was a good dog your dad knew what he was doing yeah he he uh that was the thing about my dad he always told me he said kurt he said if you don't know what a coon dog is by now in your time in life he said you'll never go he said i raised you with the best in the world you know we had david blankenship up there uh doc Kyer, john brown hey banjo too all them dogs was the you know what i mean so, therefore, I knew what a good dog was, uh, you know, but trying to raise one, uh, when I stepped into that league, that was a little different deal, you know. Well, it's harder. It's, it's hard. And uh, I've learned, like you was talking about, what, what's the difference that you notice in some of these dogs reproducing? Well, I try to breed for them naturals, and I try to look for a litter of dogs that there's just not one a freak out of the litter. You know what I mean, Josh? I try yeah. to look for where there's the whole litter, what they've done. And uh, there's a man in Oklahoma, Mr. Treadwell, John Treadwell, great guy, taught me a lot. Uh, man went through a lot in life. He owned a buoy livestock. He owned the biggest horse sale in the country down there, had a son killed bull riding, been through it all. And uh, he always used to tell me, I, I, he said, Kurt, them naturals, and them good females is where it's at, son. And uh, I always, behind every one of my dogs, will have a good mother, Josh. Yep. 
And, and I think that's important. I think do they do it too. all? No. You know, I, I'm setting out there at the world hunting. Country's done a lot. And, uh, Mr. Burkholder bred a track man bitch. And he's got about 20 of them country fans and they're standing around there and they're talking about how babe trees them layups, 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 layups. She does very nice dog. And I know country's a nice dog. Uh, does he treat layups? Trackman was noted for that. So I sat there and listened. I said, hey, what about the Trackman part in the bottom of this? Well, they got a kick out of that, you know. They said, oh, calm down, Kurt. I said, well, I'm just trying to give credit where credit's due, you know. And uh, I, keep them, I keep them fired up. I always tell them Trackman was kind of like alfalfa. Hey, jo uh, Josh, the uh, only way it hurts the horse is if they don't get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Old Buzz used to go off on that, you know. And there's a man right there, too. You know, here he had Kevin, me, and Ashley. That was three reasons to blow your head off because <laughs> I wanted it my way. Kevin wanted it his way. Ashley wanted it his way. And Ashley, without a doubt, a great handler. Kevin, without a doubt, a great handler. Me? No. Buzz said I'm the only man in the world could have 7,000 points and still have to have first tree, you know. <laughs> Uh, I like. I can, I can attest to that. Kurt. Yeah, you see me in action. Yeah, I guys. have seen you in action. Uh, if you ever see me winning, I sure enough got a good. You bet. Yeah, that's a fact. Uh, to cover my ass, because yeah. that's the way I am, and I'll probably I'll probably die that way. You know, I go out to have fun. I'm going to have some fun, and uh, that's just the way you, you got to enjoy this stuff. You know, I was out this last week with a guy and his son, and he was on him really hard. Do this, do that, and I told his dad when we got done, I said, "Hey." You need to let that boy just have some fun and cut Amen. up a little bit, you know. That's right. And don't burn him out. And he didn't like it much, but uh, me and his boy get along good. And his dad's serious, and there's nothing wrong with being serious, but there's a time and place for that. You know what yeah. I mean, Josh? No, I know exactly what you mean. And like I'm saying, getting back to these dogs, always breed them good females, I think, and 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 look at them litters of what they've thrown in the past. And and you know when you're raising up dogs what your stuff crosses on. I was blessed. I've had some dogs. I got 6,800 pups out of three stud dogs, not counting my company dog and my Tyson dog and stuff I got now. Uh, yeah, I, I was very blessed. Uh, did I get burnt out a little bit? Yeah, I love dogs more than I do people some days, you know, and that ain't no way to be. Uh, I backed off a little bit. Now I enjoy the whole deal, you know. I, I enjoy these kids today. Boy, they go out there and they'll be hunting. They get mad at them dogs and they want to thump and beat, and I tell them all. I said, hey, do you think your dad was proud of you every night? You know he wasn't, so remain calm, you know. <laughs> uh, but they don't see it that way. We all want them like machines, yep. but they're animals, Josh. And you see this, and, you know, when, when I was growing up, I wanted to run a train as soon as the milk was off their lips, yep. you know. Uh, you, it takes patience. It takes patience, and a lot of people don't have that, you know. And I'm a pup, man, and. Like I say, this team effort here, my wife, these pups run loose. She's got them coming in here. Mine's like kids. That's a big start, you know. Uh, they need to be the dog first. I've seen so many people buy a pup, take them home. Man, they're so excited. They decide of a great bitch, a great male. Their buddies are doing good, and they can't get theirs to start, and they're mad, you know. But what I find out, they're just like kids. We all learn. Some kids learn young th at a quick age. Some takes a little while. These dogs are the same way. It's all common sense, Josh. Uh, from what I've seen, I had a lot of guys that get them pups off me, and I'd sell them. I mean, hiring a cat's ass, and they'd call me Kurt. I can't get this thing to work. Boy, I'd be manner to harness. I said, and I always guaranteed them pups. I said, keep a barker on it if you got in the pen. If it's fat and slick and warmed out. I'll give your money back, no problem. Or trade you another baby pup back if that's what you want. Hey, they'd bring them back, and my wife used to call them the farm payment dogs. <laughs> we would turn them loose on the farm, and I'd get up one morning half asleep, and hear some strange dog treed behind the farm. Lord behold, I'd go back there. There would be one of them pups that they couldn't get nothing to do nothing with. I'd tie it up, bring it up, tie it up, go to hunting it. Hey. Next thing you know, the guys that had it, they'd read about it. Kurt, how'd you do that? They never had a clue. It was just turn them loose and let them be a dog a little bit, you know. And a lot of times, today and age, we rush everything. So 
And the way the country is, we don't have a spot to let these pups run like that. I've always been blessed, been off the road, you know. you got a beautiful place here. It's a, well, it's a great place to raise pups. Thank you. I mean, I always told everybody this is me and the banks, you know what I mean? you got to have a partner <laughs> by God. And uh, my wife's been a blessing. She's always worked, and everybody knows, Lord behold, knows I haven't. Uh, but you can't you, – this – these dogs take a lot of time if you're going to do it. And I don't know, it seems like anymore it takes a lot more money to make things work. So we're all trying to work and hunt, and it's, it takes a lot, you it know. It does. It does. It's, uh, times have changed a lot, Josh. Speaking of times of changing, uh, when you first started, you've hunted. I've seen you with plots. I've drawn you with plots. I've drawn you with black and tans. I've drawn you with walkers. I've been around you since I think I was 16, I think, the first yep. time I drew you yep. in a cast. And things are, things are changing at a rapid rate, I think, even more now than they were years ago. Yes, you know? they are. And yes, so are. what is, uh, just in the stud dog business, because that's kind of what the, the subject we're on right now, how is the stud, because when track man was hot, man, you have four or five females down here every week. Everybody's yes. coming down here. What track man have? Close to 3,000 pups? 3,800. 3,800 pups, almost 4,000 pups. And, man, to, people don't understand what it takes to make 4,000 pups. That's a lot of females hey, getting bred. I, I, I used to take track man. This is bad to say. But if you had 500, and the worst thing, everybody saw, Kurt, what a great promoter you are. No, actually, Josh, I was one of the worst because if you had 500 bucks and a chihuahua, <laughs> I was breeding it. I didn't do that dog right. I had, I had his head out on a chopping block. I showed that dog in front of people. Uh, me and Buzz and Kevin says, come on down. We're going to go. It was wintertime. Can't do nothing. He says, come on down. We're going to go down to Jerry Eskridge. Jerry raised a bitch and went 110000 And uh, he said, we, I'm going to go show Jerry this dog. So we go down there. Buzz had the famous hit, man. Kevin had the famous Sheena. Uh, right there next to Ronnie Nickens. And uh, we go down there. Buzz says, oh, there's only going to be two or three guys. Josh, we pull up down there, and we get there late. Imagine that with me. Yeah. We get down there about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And if there's one truck, there's 20. <laughs> side by sides, kids. I told Buzz, I said, if this dog screws up, we won't breed a bitch in the south. <laughs> he said, don't worry about that. And Buzz was right about that. We cut him loose, him and Hitman and Sheena and track man don't go 400 foot. And I mean, Todd locks a tree. Yeah, I just screams, Jack. And boy, he was some kind of loud. And old Jerry walks up there and their, their coons down there ain't very big. And they got a big old back foot when they're in them yeah. swamps. And he had this, he was a great man. He had this coon squaller hooked up on a recorder on the side by side. And I can't get this coon to look and I'm nervous and I'm thinking, oh my God. You know, you think the worst. So he turns his squalor on, and I mean, it's loud, and he's jacking around there, and that coon looks, and he says, I got him. Well, then he pulls out a gun looks like a Mini-14, <laughs> and he unloads this. He shoots his coon. It's about the size of your hand. Man, I'm proud. I'm walking on there. So we got all these spectators. Hey, things are good. I think it's Buzz's turn for their dogs to show now. Oh, no. They make, I'm thinking, I'm putting this shit in the truck. I'm look good. I pass inspection. Oh, no. Cut him again. Cut him in there. He trees another coon behind him. Their shit's still trailing in them swamps. Buzz gets me over the side. He says, hey, hold on to that son of a bitch. Our shit gets tree. I said, oh, no. You got me down here? I treed three to their one. And that Jerry said, Kurt, if I win the lottery, you're not going home with that dog. I said, oh, he's part of the family, you know, and the rest was all history. I bred a lot of females down in there. And, but what I'm getting at is that natural ability. That's yeah. what he was, and that's what we got to remember we need to breed to, you know. And track man was, I put him in the class. There's three of the most controversial reproducers. And don't get me wrong, track man was a reproducer, and I've said bad things about track man too. You call hey, me. They all have. You, I love those you, haters, Josh. They pay for this farm, yeah, you know. You call me a track man hater all the time. That's right. But uh, there's rat, there's lipper, and yep. there's track man. Now, they've all got their place, and they've all done great things for the Walker breed. Don't get me wrong, track man, I love them pups locate. 
Yep. I love their mouth. I Not loved, I loved how they were as natural tree dogs. Yep. Uh, but they're, my disparity towards Trackman wasn't towards Trackman. It was you, towards it yeah. was towards Trackman's daddy. Who's yeah, my you brother had, you, yeah, you and, and his I brother ne- had yeah, him. And- I never liked him, and so that carried on down the Trackman, which probably isn't fair. But that's just but the way that's it the way was. you see yeah, it. You that's know? the way I've seen it. And, but Trackman with thirty eight hundred pups, and I will say, uh, I've said it a hundred times. I'll tell it to you, or I'll tell it to anybody. I'm a sucker for a big locate and a good tree dog. Yeah, and, if you and, ever had it, Josh. And a pretty dog. And yeah. you know, with, out of skipper stuff that we hunt, yep. we've got skipper it Skipper did and, his part, you and bet. they were just so loud. I used to aggravate Jeremy all the time, Josh. I'd say, hey, man, you sold the wrong stud dog, you know? <laughs> yeah. He used to want to kill me, you yeah, know? Because when we when Jeremy got skipper, it was because of style. Yes, and we can't was. we can't hate style, because I've said that a hundred times, too. Style is the reason we got skipper. Yep. You know, yep. we sold style. We got Skipper out of that money, or Jeremy did, you know. So it's a, it's a love-hate relationship with all these big-time stud dogs. Yes, it is. But you've managed to go from track man to cold sweat to sweat it to bad co to Tyson, and you've just kept this going on. How do you do it, you know? Well, I look for them good females at Torada, and I like that natural ability. And... Every one of these dogs that, I, that I've that i messed with, uh, you know, I told Buzz one day when Bad Cunt was young, I said, you need to get in on this, you know. And uh, that he, is For those that are listening, that's Kurt's phone ringing. And yeah, that thing, sorry about that. That thing rings. I've been down here for, what, a couple hours, Kurt? Yes. We've been driving around on the side-by-side. We've been looking at pups. And that thing's been blowing up this whole time. Yeah, my wife absolutely hates that. If I come in to suffer, <laughs> she asks me to shut it off. I said, I can't shut that off. That might be the god dang next week's payment. You know yep, what I mean? That's right. And and I went through a stage there. I'm bad, and everybody knows, Josh. I, I wouldn't answer that phone, you know, for a little bit there. I got burnt out, you know what I mean? But yeah. I still love real coon hunters and real coon dog people. And you can spot one a mile away, you know. Uh, a lot of people come here. They used to come through here. And I take anybody hunt. Any stud dog I had, I would always show them. I yep. want you to see what I got. And I didn't mind that. Even though you might have just spread your female down the road or something, you know, uh, it used to irritate me. But like Buzz said, hey, bring them in there, show them what you got. And every one of them, after they would leave, would say, man, I wish I could get some of that locate in that tree, Kurt. Yeah. And uh, they would be back someday, you know, unless I pissed them off, you know, or something. <laughs> and I... I could do that, you know, because... Hey, out of, out of all those stud dogs and out of all these dogs you've turned loose, and you're hunting a pretty good dog right now in Whitey. He's done a lot of winning. Last time me and you drew each other, Whitey done his part. He treated a couple of coons and looked really good. Uh, yeah. Which one... I don't want to talk about your f- best reproducer or your best... Every, which one was just your favorite? I, uh, you know, Trackman was my favorite... Uh, when I first started him, I was out here one day, and he wasn't even track man, and he was down in the back in the farm here, and he he got treed, and I go running down there, and he didn't even know how to lead yet, Josh. And I'm sneaking through there because I don't want him coming off this tree. I'm wanting to see which one this is. Well, I get in there and peel the weeds back, and I see him. He's not track man yet. I reach down there. He don't even know how to lead. I carry him either. I come bringing him up here to my wife, and I said, Carrie, this is the one. This is the one. Well, hell, she's heard that shit her whole life, Josh. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'll be damned if he wasn't. And uh, I I could tell you a story about the guy that had Rat's sister, too. I'm getting off the subject. But Tommy no, Clayton. No, go ahead. We got Tommy time. Clayton had Sue. I'm standing in the line at the PKC World. And I get up there, and I've never had a lot of money. If I had 10 bucks, I'd spend it 20. You know what I mean? That's just been me. I'm standing in line. That's back when there was... 150, 200 people standing there. I get right up there to the damn counter, and I'm reaching in my pockets. I'd got beat the night before, late round. Out of sleep, I'm reaching in my pockets, and I'm short about 70 bucks. And Tommy Clayton's about three guys behind me. He says, hey, Kurt, what are you doing holding up the line? Boy, I'm embarrassed. Nobody knows who I am, you know. And I'm embarrassed. I'm a broke dick at the point. <laughs> And he said, what's the problem? I said, I didn't know you could charge shit back then, you know. And uh, they probably wouldn't have, you know. Yeah. But I said, man, I'm, I'm short on my money. I can't find it all. So he steps out of line and comes up there and pays the balance. 
He said, here's the deal, Kurt. If you get him in, we're splitting. And I'll be damned if I don't go and I get him in. And I offered him his money back. And he said, oh, no. He said, that, he said, Kurt, I'm glad to help you out. And me and him was friends from day after that. And that was just something I always remember. It was kind of neat, you know. And then I got him in, and that's when I met John Treadwell, Buzz, Kevin, Ashley. They called me out, and I went up there and got my awards and stuff. And I was coming back down through there, and my head's the size of a number three wars tub. My feet ain't touching the ground. <laughs> and track man was an outstanding looking dog, not because I had him and raised him. No, he was. He and was a uh, dog. I, I heard John Treadwell say, man, that's something even good looking. You know what I mean? Well, I, I don't deer hunt, and them guys deer hunting. And I walk on outside, and they all come out, and they said, hey, Kurt, we'd like to come up and go hunting, but we'd like to see them big deer up there. I said, hell, I, I don't care. Come on up. We'll go hunting. So they do, and I used to shoe a lot of horses, Josh. And I'd have to lay on the floor. My back would get sore when I used to work like that. Mm-hmm. So they come up here, and this is kind of funny. Ashley's daddy comes, Buzz comes, John Treadwell, T. John, and Kevin. And I'm asleep on the floor, and track man was on the couch. And I got these sliding windows and still in this same little old cabin. And they look in there, and they see that shit. Of course, track man seen him jump up, woke me up. <laughs> I opened the door, and, and uh, man, it, it was unreal, you know. They had a heart attack back then. And, yeah. Of course, Buzz had hit, man. They all talked about how loud they was. First time I heard track man locate. They didn't mention no more about that shit, you know. Yeah. And uh, we had a lot of fun. And I, uh, Buzz said, well, I'm going to write you a check for half that dog. And I said, no, Buzz, I ain't taking no checks. Pissed him half ass off. He said, what do you mean? You don't think it ain't no good? I said, no, but it ain't that at all. I'm a cash type guy, you know. Yeah. And he said, well, I'll be back. Well, hell, you know, that's everybody says that shit. <laughs> that's right. And T. John was wanting him at the same time, you know. And oh, we had a good You're time. Fine. But uh, yeah, but as you were saying, though, my favorite, you know, it had started right there. But man, I mean, I've had these cold sweat had things that that track man treated them layups. I ever got him in four o'clock in the morning, I was going to scald your ass because they'd run past me and treat one of the right or the left. Yeah. Uh, cold sweat, take them tracks out of them cornfields screaming, had that big old locate. That company, most accurate dog I ever owned in my I, life. I loved Bad Company. That it, was, that was to this day, I still, that was my the favorite dog I've ever seen you turn loose. Yep. That, that uh, was a nice dog. Yes, he was. And Buzz told Roger Dale one time, we went to Mississippi, and they said, boy, good to see you. He said, uh, what's this dog, Buzz, that you and Kurt got? He said, well, let me tell you about him, Roger Dale. This son of a bitch here can tree a coon in Walmart parking lot. <laughs> And he laughed and carried on. Well, we went out that night, and we got beat. We come back. Roger Dale comes walking up, a bunch of people. Buzz, what happened? Well, hell, didn't turn him loose in Walmart parking lot. <laughs> I mean, just shit like that all the time. And, hey, we got beat on a tiebreaker down there, you know, and that happens. And But, I mean, I got a nice dog now. This Whitey, he's out of a bitch old Lil out in Texas of Andy Fertels. And, yeah. And she was a great reproducer, like I say, and then off a rat. And he's the only white dog. My dad had a dog called High C, which there's a picture of him somewhere here. And he was all white. Remind me of this dog. And uh, he's, Buzz told me one time, he said, when you breed this dog, Kirk, to one of these pretty bitches you got, and there's six pups, five of them are blanket back and redhead, and there's one all white, one in a redhead. Which one are you going to pick? I said, hey, Buzz, kiss my ass. You know which one I'm going to get. You know what I mean? Uh, He keeps me in check, you know. But, yeah, and this little Whitey, he does some things that I really like. He, When he's a pup, he's around me on the farm all the time. And uh, one day we had four of them pups. And Buzz said, turn them on the farm. Well, you know, we was down about two draws of rat semen. And we cut them loose. And one day I called Buzz. I said, well, we're out of the rat business. He said, what do you mean we're out of the rat business? I said, well, I've been three point some miles, and they're running shit, and I still ain't got them caught. And I'm chasing, and I'm wore out, and I finally give up. One day, one comes back. Next day, another one comes back. About four days, they all come back. Why well, get them put up after that, no, Josh? Yeah. One thing I love about what you guys did with these rat pups 
is we've had semen pups. Semen pups have been a big deal since lipper got collected, and they started breeding back to him and stuff. And they would have these lippers or these litters out of lipper or out of some other big name stud dog or something, and they'd make them a show champion or something, and then they'd put them in the stud pen, and they never did. These rat pups got hunted. Yes, right. And they got hunted at the highest levels. I mean, I drew Whitey in a twenty five hundred dollar entry pro classic. You've had him down at the Winter Classic. You've had him at, you know, all the major events. You just got back from being in the top 100 of the PKC world. Yep. I mean, these dogs are getting hunted, and that's what I look for, as opposed to these guys that I'm not a big fan of semen pups because they think they're too valuable. Right. And they don't get in there, and they don't get these dogs hunted to see if they're worth reproducing or not. Well, here, here's what I always said, and my dad and Buzz, there's never one too good to turn loose. That's right. Frank Giddings proved that, had some rough luck there. But if you think you got one that's too good to turn loose, you don't have much of a dog and you're scared to turn him loose. Yep. Uh, I think the best way to promote a dog is word to mouth. Yep. Uh, I, Matt McAllister, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest promoter of all times. And my dad had a little money back in the day. And every time Mac would, would raise a litter of pups out of a great bitch, he'd call my dad. Hey, Jerry, you need to get that kid two or three of these pups, you know. Uh, I'm not saying they was all good. We filled the ditches full of some of them. But now, when the cross hit, Josh, they would be good ones. Yeah. Uh, but I know exactly what you're saying. I know some people has got them semen dogs, and you're right. They put them up. I, I think that's wrong, you know. Uh, you don't know what, unless you hunt these things a while. You don't know what kind of nose yeah. they got. You don't know what kind of ability they got. You know, you some of these pups will get us so high, and by the time they're two years old, you're ready to kill one. Yeah. I've seen them go forward and backwards, you know, and my dad always swore that them dogs that started later was better. Uh, I'd say there's some truth in that. Yeah, I'd say you're right. Some of them dogs that start young, they're as good then as they ever are. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of it is the guy behind him that don't burn them out. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can keep one put together. Uh, Speaking of that, uh, I have a hard time keeping one put together. You know that. I mean, I, I'll have a male dog, and it's just the males. The male dogs will be hot for six, eight months, and, man, I, can't, I win every cast I'm in. They're blown up, and some of it's what I do, and I realize that, and some of it's just the pressure of being in a cast. Most of the time... You, when Kurt Erring's out of cast, you're hunting a male dog. Yes. When you see me, Josh, you expect me to yes. hunt a male. Yeah, you're going to promote a male. You're going to hunt a male. Uh, what's the difference between just hunting the males and the females and how you're keeping them? You know, because Whitey's been winning quite a while. It was three years ago, I think, I drew him at Bear Creek, yep. and then I drew him again. He's still looking good. He's still looking fine. The, the thing of it is, Josh, a lot of people are heavy-handed on dogs. Every dog are like kids. Uh me, I needed a clubbing. You understand? Yeah. Uh, some dogs you got to be kind of easy with. Uh, people go to correcting on them. And some guys got to have a dog that can take a little more abuse than other guys. Mm-hmm. Now, me, I should give mine a little more. And everybody would tell you if I'd have worked on Whitey on a few things, I probably could have won the world hunt. But I was proud of him this year. I, You know, breaks, wins, coon hunts. I can't find two coons. It's thick. I'm not making excuses, but I called my wife. I was just hearted, but, hey, I was proud of the way he looked. Uh, I mean, he took me right to the end, you know. And Trackman was that way, too. He In cold sweat, I didn't have to work on them dogs much, you know. No. I left them pretty natural. Probably if I would have been a little harder on them on some things, but getting back to what you said, a lot of times when you get hard on them dogs, it backs them off. Yep. And a dog at a certain age, a lot of times, will back off. And I bought a lot of pups back when guys are mad at them. Yeah. Put them up, restart them a little. Well, not restart them, but give them a break in the mind. And I was a big philosophy of if I want to work, I want to get paid. And I, I was, I figured you need to take a, a gun to the woods and and a switch. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and show them what you're after, and and just. Be level-headed with one. My theory is, and let me know what you think about this, Kurt. Every dog is born on this God's green earth with so many corrections that it until it hits its limit. That's right. 
And if a guy's correct, and some dogs are a thousand, some dogs are twenty. That's right. And I think that when you hit that limit, sometimes it's at two years old, sometimes it's at eight years old. You yes, know, right. They'll go the through a stage. You know yeah. what I mean? I've seen them. Uh, what I noticed too, Josh, these these dogs today that we're breeding, I don't think they need as much I correcting. Think I think they're smarter. They're smarter. Yeah. Uh, my dogs have always been a blessing for that. And therefore, they can pick up as much bad as they can good that fast. Yeah. But the difference is you can correct these dogs today. You know, I see guys go out there and get mad. Well, he's not leading right. Well, he ain't <laughs> loading right. Well, he's backed that dog. He's done this. So, so far, he's whipped him four times. And, hey, the dog's confused. Yeah. The greatest handler of all time, Kevin Turner. I mean, he, I seen him ruin a dog one night, wouldn't load. And Buzz is hunting a full brother to him, and Buzz gets treed, and, and Kevin's don't, you know. And, hey, by the time we got done, he, Kevin had worked on him for everything, and, and that's one reason Buzz kept me around, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I told Kevin, I said, leave him up here with me. I used to think I was a miracle worker, you know, but I really wasn't. This farm was a miracle that nobody knows, you know. I knew how to feed and take care of one. My dad was a horse man, and he was in. He knew every. Hey, he was raised around them dogs, and he made every mistake known to man, and I have too. You know, he had tricks he could do and taught me. Some of them was right, and some of them was wrong. But I think all in all, a man just be patient and watch. And and you know what I try to tell these guys, and if you like a dog, you need to kind of breed that dog so. You can kind of keep them characteristics if that's yeah. what you want. Uh, and that's why there's chocolate, vanilla, you know. That's just the way it is. You, everybody likes something different. Speaking but, of something different, uh, I only hunt, and I, it's not that I haven't hunted any UKC hunts. I have. Uh, but I don't hunt very many. I don't pay a whole lot of attention to it, and I should, because it ain't that I don't like them boys and I don't like what they're doing. I mean, Alan's been great and trevor's been great and i love the guys and i love how they do the world hunt how they do the live broadcast i think they do it really well very professional there. but to me it's a different style than pkc uh it's different guys i mean i looked at the ukc world hunt last night i didn't know any of them boys yeah you know i just didn't know them i don't nothing against them. i'm sure they got great dogs i'm sure they're great handlers i'm sure they're great dog men but they're just it's two separate worlds and you're in both of them yeah i mean you can hunt You'll be you'll be at the World Hunt one week and a Pro Classic the next week. What's the difference between well, those two? Well, here here's the thing that I see: your UKC people, nothing against the PKC guys because they raise pup, but your UKC guys, they raise a lot of pups. Yeah. So you know, Josh, if they said, Kurt Aaron, if we could give you any World Hunt, which one would you want? Well, me being a breeder, I would like the UKC. Because they're going to breed them dogs. Uh, PKC guys, they want to give 30000 for one. Yeah. And because they're, they're, they know what they want. Yeah. And a lot of the, you know, it's just, and the guys raise, the PKC guys are raising a lot of pups now. I mean, it's changing there too, Josh. But there is some difference there. And UKC's got the three-minute trees now and. They've done some things. They're trying to upgrade, love, you know. I love UKC's rules. Yes, I, really I do, do too. Uh, I still say you need a cast winner with the circle trees, you know, because you go hunt for 100000 you need a winner. Yeah. And uh, that's just kind of a, a pet pee of mine, you know. I, I, I think you need a winner. Yeah. And I know your dogs are supposed to treat coons, but some nights things happen freakish. Some nights are rough. That's right. Not every night's a good night. You know, that's why they're called coon hunting. That's right. Josh. That's right. But, yeah, I've, uh, I've really enjoyed my life. I've been very blessed, you know. But I, if I had anything to do over again, I'd make sure when my daughter was 16, track man and was really young and hot, and I had to be gone a lot. And I told everybody, take care of that family. I should have been there with her for a little bit, but I, I really couldn't hardly be. But we made it all through it, you know, and, and uh, it was team effort here on this farm, I can promise you. It's a beautiful farm, Kurt. I, and uh, for some reason, I haven't been down here. I don't know why. Well, them track man haters, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what it is, Josh. 
<laughs> and I love, and everyone's, and say when I'm 17, 18 years old, which would have been 23 years ago, and I drew Kurt Aaron, I thought, my gosh, you know, I'm going to have to draw Kurt. Me and him's probably going to argue, you know. And then We I, usually do, Josh. We but, do. Hey, but, but it's now, over when it's done, ain't it, Josh? Yeah, it is, but now I enjoy it. And every time I draw you, I know what I'm going to get because you've been the same for two decades, you know, that I've known you. Yeah, I hate to change it. Yeah, that's right. And the last hunt we was in, man, we got into a good one too, but we was buddies right after. Hey, one after it was over. You know what I mean? That's right. Uh, What What do you see? Like we're and this is this is the truth portion of the podcast. We talk about competition hunting. We talk about all the myths and the and the falsities and stuff that people talk about it, but. What do you see in these casts? I mean, most of these casts are good dudes with good guys, I think. And yes. Are you seeing the same thing? I'm seeing the same thing. Uh, I'm seeing these 16 dog hunts is really professional. Yeah. Is what I'm seeing right there. Not that these bigger hunts aren't, but I think the group of guys that's coming there, uh, we're trying to get along. We mm-hmm. want this to work. Uh, do we all, hey, every now and then we're all going to, you know what I mean? If, we all want to win. That's right, Josh. Yeah. And if you wasn't, I wouldn't go out there if you wasn't giving me some competition. Yeah. And you would be the same with me. When you draw me, hey, listen, I tell everybody, I'm not there to make friends. You know, these guys go out there and you get ready to turn loose. Man, they're shaking your hand. They're acting like we're all going on vacation together next week, you know. <laughs> I'd rather them say, hey, Kurt, I'm going to screw you any way I can or get you. <laughs> Because then I got respect for you. Yeah. When you go out there and you treat me like that, I'm thinking, man, this guy, he's going to slip this in here easy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's kind of a little beef I got there, you yeah. know. Just, hey, be yourself out there. Do what you think's right. And judging today is, we got some phenomenal judges today. Yeah. And that's you a need blessing. A, you need them with this much money on the line. With the money on the line that we got, we need professional judges. Yeah. Matter of fact, Bad to say, but some casts need two judges away. We're all over the woods. I think you do, too. I think things are going to change some. Uh, What do you think about the new rule changes, about the no-leash lock, and they're they're considering making sure everybody walks to every tree? I I think the no-leash lock's great. I'm an old man. I don't think I need to go to every tree. Yeah. If I can't trust you, Josh, to go in there and a judge... I think that's hogwash. I think, because from what I've talked about that, and I talked to Michael Ward and Darty and Jed and everybody, and I hate the leash lock rule. I always have. But I don't need to walk to every tree. Nope. But it seems like the younger guys, they want to keep the cast together, and the older guys, they want to just split up and go to every tree, and it's kind of split down the middle. Yeah, and, you know, I can't see walking a mile over there if I don't need to, and my dog's sitting over here 800 yards, and it's 100 degrees. I might need to get him a drink. Yeah. Uh, I look after I look after my dogs. I carry water bottles. I'm a nut. Yeah. Uh, I do everything. And hey, listen, Weed and Ward and, and you and hey, all you guys are great. And, hey, uh, you guys are coon hunters, professionals. You know, and and yeah, you're there to win. And if you don't know the rules, you're going to use them on him. Yep. That's been that way. Since the beginning of time. It was since way before Facebook. <laughs> yes. I, yeah, absolutely. I work. Hey, yeah, really. I don't get on there because yep. I'm into making history. Yep. Oh, Jeff Billing, when I come in, we was up there having a little old deal. And he says, I hear the way to get a good track, man. Dogs will breed a good bitch. Well, I said, he said, that's what I've been reading. I said, well, I'm not into reading. I'm into making history. <laughs> I went and turned cut me out and come back, had 750, knocked him off the bubble, mm-hmm. and won one of your great coon squallers. Yeah, that's right. I remember. Yes. Bad yes. Company was a good coon dog. Yes, he was. He would get yonder, and, yeah. and, and you could count on him. And people talk about, and Kurt, and I've told you, and everybody's told you, and you know this, that you're not the best handler. No, I'm the worst. And Bad Co., the first time I hunted with him, I was hunting duds. You were hunting Bad Co. He's at the 500 added up there yep. in Ravana. And we yep. cut loose, and I think we all treated a coon together out of the pickup. And then after that, we all got spread out. And Badco treated two more coons to my one, yep. and I treated a slick, I think. And, man, he flew through the country, and he treated coons, and he had this great big mouth and beautiful locate, beautiful tree dog. And I just fell in love with him. Yeah, I love that dog. But you also dang near lost because you treated my dog once. Yes, and I t- did. And took a minus. And then you and struck my dog. And you all made sure dog. I took my minus. Yep. Remember, you dang right I did. And you struck my dog once and took some minus. And so I know th- better than to do yep. that. There's only one. He had a mouth that nobody could yep. pitch. It was plumb yep. obvious. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, Dud's located, and you treed. Yep. Company, I thought, what on earth, Kurt, are you doing? I said, that's all Dud's. And you looked at me, and you said, I know, it is. <laughs> yeah, he's treated coon behind her down yep. the gravel road in a big tree. Yep. Two big trees come out, remember that? I do. On a Y. And that one judge said, uh, is that all one tree? I said, oh, man, we ain't going to go there, are we? And that was, I forget that gentleman's name. His daughter, my granddaughter's with me. Mike Grooms. Mike Grooms' Mike daughter Grooms, yep. and my granddaughter stayed yep. at the truck because yep. we hunted the late round. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that was, Mike Grooms said, I don't think it, I said, and you said, no, that's all one tree. Yep. It's all connected at the base, and it yep. was. No, I, I fell in love with Bad Co. that night. I even texted Duke when I got back. I said, you know, that's, a, that's the first time I went. That's a good dog. Yes. I like that dog. He had all the bells and whistles, and he had some talent. We had two of those. I'll tell you a little story about that. Duke takes him over there, and his mom, the very good pup raiser, well, Duke was gone a lot. Yeah. So she had six, and she, she, what company was was track man and, and bone collector's yep. sister. Yep. Baby. Very good bitch, too. So he's gone, and Duke's mom was gone, and when they got back, there was only two alive. So one of them, of course, looked like track man, good looking. And company, he, he, he was a good looking hound, but he didn't look like the other one, you know. And Duke said, that and there's mine. I, well, I thought I got to pick a litter, Duke. Well, you know, me and Duke's good friends, but we've had some subscriptions, but no big deal. <laughs> he said, well, take him to your house and let them both run. So I do. And one time, hey, I'm on a gravel road, plum freakish. Hey, this dog... Run some shit, I ain't going to lie, gets hit on a gravel road. Man, I'm sick. I hate yeah. to call Duke. So I call him. He's mad. Don't talk to me for a couple of weeks. Well, now I'm forced to hunt company more, and I had, and I stepped into it. And Duke had never been with him. He said, bring him to the world hunt. I've got some spots down. I want to go see that pup. I said, all right, I'll bring him. So he takes me down there to one of Jeff Travis's old spots and Ronnie Bone. And I didn't know this good a spot was down there. Ronnie hunted me for years down there and never took me there. <laughs> I love Ronnie to death, but you know how that works. Yeah. So Duke takes me over there, and I tree four coons around this swamp. And, and Duke said, my God, Kurt, do you know what you got? I said, yep. He said, you do know we're partners, don't you? I said, well, I thought this one was mine. Well... We was partners because he had the papers. I still hadn't got the papers. <laughs> Imagine that. I'm a little slow learner, Josh. So we end up, you know, Duke went through the divorce, and one day he called and he said, listen, I'm going to come get that dog in April. I said, no, you're not going to come get this dog. I said, I'm going to buy you out, Duke, because I knew you wasn't hunting, Josh. Yeah. He was going through some hard times yeah. with his missus, and he got it worked out. And... Uh, Company slept in the house and never had a whip in his life, and I knew if he went over there, he'd probably get one, not that he didn't need one. Yeah. So one day he calls me, and he tells me, well, you ain't got no money. I, I'm going to buy you out. I said, well, what's it take for your part? And he told me. I call Buzz. He gets it wired out there immediately. He wakes up three days later. We own him, and he don't. He was a little upset, uh, but he knew he was going to do right with him, yeah. and he did, and and. Uh, we took him to the world hunt, get him in first night, super stakes first night. He spoiled me. I mean. That was a nice dog. He treated those coons. And the recast on him was strong because most dogs are recast. A lot of times they're weak. Recast on him. He'd get on past them dogs and have a coon treat. I say the, the times I hunted with him, his second drop. He, was, he hustled harder than he yes, did Yes, that's drop. exactly right. And that's rare. People that don't understand rare. how rare that is. They don't. No. Uh, they don't. You know, uh, you hunt nice dogs, and uh, that little female, me, you hunting with, she's a nice one. You she know? looked good last night. Me and Jeremy hunted, and she went seven for seven or something like that. She looked real good. Oh, they all look good. We turned them loose in thick coons. But. Yeah, the, hey, the trader man up there, he used to hate. He used <laughs> to hate some of these dogs of mine and give me hell. Oh, Finley. I, think, I think Finley just likes giving you. Oh, hell. he like he likes seeing me get fired up. He's got a sunrise <laughs> bitch, and I'm hunting sweat it. We're at the finals, and hey, we all treat three coons apiece, and we're having a, and I mean Nikki Hale's in the cast. We're yeah. having a damn shootout now, and uh, they always give me hell if anything back. Well, sweat it goes over the hill, 
and I mean I got him locating tree, and I'm going to win this cast if Finley's bitch don't cover, and Sunrise shit don't cover, and Finley don't put up with that. Lord behold, she comes in there and backs <laughs> and beats me. And boy, I'm some kind of sick and mad. I said, Finley, I don't never want to hear <laughs> nothing bad. He said, Kirk, you think he's got a coon? I said, well, we're coon hunting, ain't we? Because <laughs> he knows if the coon's there, I'm yeah. beat. So I said, hey, don't ever run these son bitches down to mine again because I just won you 10000 I don't know what, it was a pretty damn good check, and I was sick. And I was free from money as a frog was from hair back then. <laughs> and, you know, I had to call and tell my wife another excuse, you know. Yeah. She used to tell me, oh, don't tell me. Second again, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Or, or, I used to say, hey, I got beat for 25. She said, I don't want to hear that shit no more. <laughs> She said, did you make a bad call? I said, no, I didn't do that. Well, she knew that right away. Yeah. You know. I'll tell you what, you've lost more money on one bad call in your life than most people earned in a lifetime. Oh, yeah. I was out here this last week, and I drawed a man that had all the money, dogs, Kevin Cable. Yeah. And he said, Kurt, have you ever been on a cast that you ain't give? I give Whitey 125 pump retreats, three more coons. And he's hunting a good dog. Yeah. Cost 100000 And Kevin don't make no mistakes. He don't make no, any. Kevin Very good make- handler. Kevin Very good no guy. Yep. I gave him hell, though. He got. He said, Kurt, we're only taking two trucks. Get in with me. I said, okay, Kevin. I said, you know I'm going to walk back. You know how I mean you are in a cast. Yeah. But he's like you, Josh, and me. When we're done, it's over. Yep. So he gets in the truck, and he says, hey. He says, you know this dog I bought, this echo dog. He said, he's a nice dog. I said, well, I'm sure he is. But I got one thing to say to you. Money, big money, broke money, all them dogs, wherever they are, have done you so right, and you've been so good with them. We're driving about an hour from the club to go turn loose. Before we get to the woods, he he lightens up. I'm thinking, boy, this is going to be good. It done pissed him off forever got out of the truck. <laughs> so he said, hey, Kurt, I was thinking about what you said. He said, I understand that. He said, I love them dogs, but I want to go to bigger hunts. And the other gentleman, he hunted for him. We all know who that was. Yeah. He he's slowing down a little and don't want to spend that sixty five hundred on inventories yep. and not that's yep. not made for everybody, Josh. No, it you ain't. know and so I kind of understood that, you know, and uh, we had a good time and we laughed, carry on. But hey, I think if you're truthful with the guy and tell him that something you can help because I appreciate when you tell me something. Yeah. Because you know, I don't see everything, and other people from the outside see things. You know, that was the thing about Duke and Buzz. I might not have liked it. And you and, and Jeremy, all you guys, uh, I might not have liked it, but I need to be told, yeah. you know. And uh, I think if everybody, you know, I, didn't, hey, I might bull up and pile a little bit, but, hey, tell me for my own good. Believe it or not, Josh is the only one one time in the clubhouse. I had a flat tire was going to come get me, and I had to stop another guy and run in front of the truck to get him stopped. I, I, I was on my way. Oh, yeah, this hoping to get rid of me, you know what I mean, Josh? <laughs> That's the night I won it all. I'm I, glad you was there. You did win it all. I feel sorry for that guy that picked you up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he put me in the back. My God, I'm, I had about a half inch of room in that truck. And I was bitching a little bit. He said, hey, Kurt, I can't let you out. I said, you're right. I got definitely enough room. I said, what about turning the air on back here? He said, I can let you out, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was old J.J. Junior Johnson, I called yeah. him. My old plot, buddy. Yeah. I had a great plot dog named Crank. I sold him for 10000 He was... One of a kind. The first time I drew you, you was hunting a black and tan called Ratchet, and I think I was 16 years old. We was yep. in an RQE at Kirksville, Missouri. Yes. And me and you argued for two hours. Yes. And we got back to the clubhouse, and we've been friends ever since. That's right. I had a full brother to Hayes Jr. I yeah. hunted. I owned Hayes Jr. till he died, me and Gerald Turner. And my neighbor went over here and bought two black and tan pups off of Mark Reed. Yeah. And off the number one reproducing bitch was Ben Susie. See, there I go again. Everything I hunted was out of good bitches. Yeah. Hayes Jr., out of old Jewel. Hey, just, I don't know what it is. That's what I always base my life on. But anyway, uh, I told that gentleman that night, he's a good friend of mine, Mike Grant. I said, uh, Mike, I don't need no black and tan. But I said, if he'll run a tree and stay with Hard Knock and Jack, Hard Knock and Cindy's sister, Hayes Jr.'s full brother. Them was good dogs, but they was stout. They didn't play good with others yeah. sometimes. If you wanted just tree, you had no trouble. You go nipping, pulling on them, your hands was full. But 
I told Mike that, and he priced me that pup. It was cheap. Seven, eight hundred. I don't know what it was. Hey, not only did he, Mike sat in the truck, and he turned him loose, and not only did he run a tree with Jack, but he was split. I didn't volunteer that, of course, Josh, when I got there. <laughs> you know. Uh, was it right? You Probably not. You don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Coach. That's right. They should have went with you. That's right. That's hey, right. That's right. So I get in there, and he split. They both got coons. I run back to the truck to give him this money. I Hey, I take him. I win some black and tan stuff. Hey, the um, Mark, Walt, let's see, I forget his name. Waltz was his last name. Very good guy in Wisconsin. I'm driving an old Maverick car, and I had him in the back seat, and he said, Kurt, I want to buy that dog. I said, well, he's for sale. He's not on sale. And he counted me out a wad of cash on the front of that old truck in front of Bob Goodwin and all them. And they never seen dogs sell like that, yeah. you know. And then I raised a plot dog one time uh, the same way. I've never been colorblind. I I had track man was uh, about a year old, and I bred a, a bitch. To, I sold crank for big money, and I sell him to a guy, and I, I'll never forget the guy's name. His, his name is just like Jack Russell the dog. He's got a real good female that come from Tim Seals off of a dog called Mike, that was a hunting fool. So he comes up and he says, Kurt, if you'll take me down there to breed or get that, he said, I'll give you two pups and a pick. So I go all the way down there, and this man, W.C. Scott, come up here and give me a lot of money for that dog. And he said, Kurt, yeah, you're welcome to breed anything you want. And he owned West Virginia Ball. I mean, a bunch of good dogs. Yeah. I go down there. I breed. I come back. And it's time to pick up my pup out there from this Jack Russell. I go to... And there was one that looked like Crank. He was black with brindle stripes, big blocky head. He was a freak. Two white feet in the front where the walker was coming out. I, I don't know if he had him or not, but that's the way them dogs was bred. And Russ oh, Kirk yeah. and all them out there was good people. Was. And so I go and I reach down and get this good-looking one that, that uh, looks just like Crank. No, and I had Trackman in the back seat. And my daughter and my wife was ever excited to get this pup. And he said, well, this Jack Russell comes out. He said, you're not getting that one. That's mine. He said, you can get any other two, but not him. Boy, you talk about mad. I told my wife, I said, I think I'm just going to pick him up and shoot him and lay him at the end of his driveway. <laughs> I say a lot, but I never heard a dog. I should have shot yeah. him. <laughs> so I'm mad. I opened the back door up on a truck the track man bought. I said, do you think I need that son of a bitch when I got the dog that looks like this? And I reached, she said, Kurt, go get two of them pups. I said, I'm not going to hunt them, Carrie. She said, get them and get, I had a good friend named Kevin over yeah. here. I called him Goo. Plot manned his underwear. But blinded, wouldn't go out to breed to nothing great. Yeah. He did breed one, Jimmy Cannon won the world hunt. I, I was on my way home and I said, Kevin, go sell a calf and breed to that dog. Go hunting, crazy fool. And boy, he did good. He raised them litter dogs. And I get them getting back to this Jack Russell. I go down, I, I pick these pups up, and I take him home. I call Kevin, I tell him what's up. I'm mad. At, and the plot people is usually very good people. Yeah. Very good people. But this guy here's word was not worth two dead rats. <laughs> so <clears throat> I get home, call Kevin. I said, come get him. I'm going to kill him. I wouldn't have. Don't do that. I'll be right over and get him. And he did. And he had one. He raised, and his dream was always to win plot days. Yeah. Well, here's what his wife thought of me. Every time he got in trouble, he blamed old Kurt. <laughs> so him and his buddy, old Johnson, they said, Kurt, come hunt this FEMA for us in plot days. I said, okay. So they load me up, put me in the back seat of this Chevy truck, haul me to Tail City, and I win it. So we go back to the room. I'm getting some sleep. I don't know they're giving out the trophies and everything. We win trophies, lights, tracking system, all kinds of shit. Well, I'm back at the room. I get a shower, and I'm pacing the floor, and I'm waiting for them, Josh. They don't show forever. Well, now I'm hungry. Well, they get back. We go eat, and I said, hey, let's go get our pictures taken and stuff, you know. They said, hey, Kurt, we picked everything up already. Well, hell, they got trophies, everything in there. <laughs> I said, man, that's how I treat you. This guy's the best man at my wedding. He didn't have no neck. I'd have hit him in the nose, you know. Some bitch stout as a bull. 
So I'm powdered up. So finally we go back out there, and I see Jimmy Cannon. And I, I tell Jimmy what's going on. He gets to laughing, you know. But we get home, and he's got these big old trophies. I said, I can't eat them things. I said, but I want that light and some yeah. shit. Just make it right with me. And he did. Yeah. So on the way home, I got even with him, Josh. I, I called his wife before he got there. I knew this. I said, hey, his wife's name was Missa. Very good person. And she had a, hey, I've been a crazy guy, but he always blamed me. If I kept him out all night or whatever, it's always Kurt. Yeah. Well, I said, Missa, I went with Kevin and Johnson to that hunt, and I left my watch in the truck. Of course, I did, you know. She said, you mean you went to that hunt? I said, oh, yeah, I won it all for him. Holy shit, boy. <laughs> She don't say nothing. She hangs up. Kevin calls me about three days later. And I wondered why he wouldn't answer his phone. You didn't have to get her all stirred up. God <laughs> damn boy, give me hell. But I said, I got even with you, by God. <laughs> but I've had some good times with dogs, you know. And I draw Dick Brothers and I, Ronnie Bone with Stetson and uh, Hard Knock and Cindy with Timmy Waters Hunter and yeah. Plot Days. Or not Plot Days, at Walker Days. And, uh, man, I mean, I have a shootout with him. And Ronnie Bones says, I don't know what that thing is, but he's sure enough a good one, Kurt. And I think I scored 750 down there. And he was, a, he was a kind of a freak. I, Kevin had him, that same plot I had him, and he was out of a great bitch, though. Yeah. His mother uh, was on the front of the book, Hatchet Creek Mike and Hatchet Creek Spider, on the front of the American Cooner. And uh, they... Uh, I want to buy, I wasn't going to buy no plot dog. And back when I did have a job, I was working road construction, and Kevin worked for co-op. And said, what would a what would a plot like that be worth today? Oh, thirty thousand. Yeah. I got easy. 30, I got 000. ten thousand back then. Yeah. And I, I I needed to pay my farm payment. I was going to be like my dad. I'd bought this farm, and he paid his payment once a year. Well, I needed eighty seven hundred, and I'd lay out and hunt all year. Two weeks before this payment's due, I don't have $87, Zach. <laughs> or Josh, sorry. Well, anyway, uh, my wife says, what are we going to do? I said, something will come. And the good Lord, I'm sitting here in a lazy boy, cranks on the floor. Uh, I got a, at Christmas time, I had a bow on his head where he had pictures of him, and he's a good-looking rascal. Boy. Yeah. Archie DeRay, they had all them good dogs down south. He comes up here, he said, my God, Kurt. Had old Gump and all them good dogs. I throttled them all. But I'm supposed to beat you in my backyard. Yeah. But anyway, we go to Walker Days. He said, I told you didn't need no job. I got fired for not showing up. I win that down there. Went about 1800 Come home. And I told my wife, and we didn't have this money for this payment. And I'm sitting there on the couch. how the good Lord works. And the phone rang. And Mr. Scott said, are you the man that's got the plot, dog? I said, yeah. He says, he for sale. I said, yeah, but you're going to think you bought the farm. He comes up here. And Paul Sheffield used to make them green jackets and green bibs. Yep. And this man pulled up in an El Camino. And he, when he stepped out, he had, I didn't have the hunting cabin in for people to stay in. He had a room uptown. He had green bibs on, green coat on, and green in his hand to buy this <laughs> dog. Well, I tell the man the truth about I wasn't for sale, but if I, I had the farm was going to come first. So... I take him hunting two nights. He's got to have him. Let me show you, tell you how smart this man was. He said, Kurt, I could have got the cash now, cash. He said, I'm going to write you a check. And he said, it won't be no good unless you call and tell me that you're going to sell him. And then we'll meet and I'll get the dog. That old man knew when he drove out my driveway, he had that dog bought. I take the check back and put it in the cabinet. Hey, I try everything I can. I'd go up there the last day of the bank. My banker said, man, did you bring the beer? He said, you had me nervous. <laughs> He's the same man that loaned me money to put track man up. He didn't understand yeah. dogs, you know. And he said, I've seen a lot of high-priced bulls, hogs, but never a dog, you know. He had respect for me then, you know. Yeah. But he's also the same man that told me, you can't, I like to golf, but I don't do it every day, <laughs> you know, because all my ass are not working. And he builds a new house where you can tee off from his yard, you know. Yeah. So we had a little discrepancy about that one day. <laughs> But anyway, I, I get the payment paid, and I take the dog to the man. And uh, the man, I mean, I've had some very, and then Trackman come right along after yeah. that, and it just I always worked hard though, Josh, to, yeah. and hunted hard, you know. Well, uh, the what I've seen, Kurt, you can't have a place like this 
and I, I've been there. I've had a place like this. I've, and it takes hard work. It does take you hard know? work. And to, take, to have a good dog of any kind is hard work, it, it let takes, alone multiple dogs. It takes nights in the woods. It takes understanding wives. Hey, my wife, she should have left me 25 times. Why she didn't, I'll never know. I guess because <laughs> she couldn't find another one like me. I don't think she wants another one like me. <laughs> and she works for Blue Cross Blue Shield, and I'm insured heavily, so... I figured she thought I was going to die earlier than I have, you know. <laughs> I don't drink nothing that ain't got a sealed lid around here. I can <laughs> promise you. That's just the way that works. Hey, I, hey, that's a, hey, old Steve Yant used to say, hey, Kurt, when you die, I'm going to have Thrasher's Lane down there. I said, that'll be good. He said, I wish you'd do a little more, though, you know. <laughs> that's the way they treat me, Josh. Al Nunneman, oh, all of them, my oh, God. Yeah. But that's the way I like it. I ask for it, you know. Yeah. I like to joke and tease and carry on and. But I'm serious about a good hound and a good mouth. I mean, and we all are. Yep. And it's hard to get today. What I noticed, these people, my dog, I'm still breeding my dogs with semen because they want that mouth. You know, I got a lot of people that call me and say, hey, Kurt, I got a good dog and I'm winning, but I need some mouth back. Yep. And I'm getting a lot of them people who come back. And Why do you think I like them trader dogs? It ain't because of Jed. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Them are good dogs. They, they, they got, got noses. They got good mouths. That's right. And, you know, I like a good mouth and I like a good locate, and that's one thing I've always respected about the TrackMan stuff. And I've told people, like I said earlier, I've told people I love their mouth, I love their locate, you know. And you'll hear people on the Internet or everywhere, we bred the nose out of them, we bred the mouth out of them, blah, blah, blah. But the TrackMan dog's got the mouth. They got the mouth. Yeah. Traders got that nose. and yeah. They got hunt, independency. Hey, I take a cold. I breed a good. I breed Shock Sister 401K. Yeah. And I had a pair of them, and one of them ended up missing. I still got the runt, and he's good-looking. I'm blessed to have one. Yeah. You know, uh, I try to hunt what I raise and raise what I hunt, Josh. You know, it might not be worth a damn, but it's what I know how to train, and I know how to breed this line of dogs, you know. And I, uh, I've i made a lot of mistakes. That Would I do things different? Probably. But behind sight's 2020, you know. Yeah. I, I, the day I bred, I called my dad. And I said, I just bred track, track man's mother, Rockford Rat's sister, to style. Yeah. I tell my dad, I even told Jeremy, four or five people. They all said, man, you're nuts. I thought, well, maybe I am, but I got to try it. So I tried it, and Jeremy offered me 5000 for him. He was nine months old. And another man did up there that used to have that Kelowna club. Uh, I bought, got mad at him and sold him a John Monroe one day. Yeah. He was out here running loose. And tr hey, I come home, my granddaughter was young, and I've got my wife bought a big case of diapers, you know, them yeah. big things. Yeah. I had it on the car. Track man was a pup. I come home, it looked like it snowed out here. You ever pick up about 40 diapers that's been chewed up <laughs> by four pups? And then was all track man's brothers in. Yeah. And I told my wife, I'm about sick of these aggravating son of a guns. And uh, it's just wild how that looked. You look back yep. at that, you know, and I've been really blessed uh, in a lot of ways. I don't mean to piss nobody off, but sometimes it happens, oh, you know? know. We all know you, Kurt. I, I, mean, I mean well. Yeah. Uh, sometimes don't end up well, Josh, yep. you know? Well, that's the way it is with all of us. Yeah, I mean, hey, it's like I said, if we're not going to compete, why be out there? Exactly. You know, I never seen nobody say to Earnhardt, drive by him. Yeah. You race by him. You know what yeah. I mean? And if he didn't like it, he put you in the wall. Uh, and that's why I believe in coon hunting. While we're out there, Kenny Mason used to come down here, and, and Kenny's a very wealthy man and an oil man. And he's got 2,500 acres next to me. Yeah. And I tell Kenny, I said, Kenny, tonight you're a coon hunter, not an oil man. So you're like the rest of us. And he always got a kick out of that. Yeah. And he always would bring the fanciest new Ford truck up. And I've always had a Toyota, you know. And you can't have a good truck with a dog. It's going to get scratched. So one night we're coon hunting. Donnie's with us. And Kenny had a bad habit of slamming a door. Well, I'm like an old wash. I'm OCD like an old wash woman. <laughs> I try to take care of what I got, you know. And he gets out. We're kind of having a rough hunt at this point, about 3 in the morning. And I'm hunting company. He's hunting bit, and Donnie's hunting uh, that. Oh shoot! He was a junk runner, sold it for big money, and then they 
Wes Hamilton had him. Johnny be good. Johnny be good, yes, sir. I hunted with him when they was a year old. They all yeah. was a year old. And Kenny gets out of the truck like Bit wasn't going to stay and slams the door and likes to throw me through the other side. <laughs> Before I realized it, I might have said, hey, Kenny, I like good shit too. Don't be slamming my door. <laughs> and that Donnie hit the ground laughing, Jack. And I thought, oh, my God, I can't believe I talked to him yet. Oh. There ain't, but hey, b before you go any further, there ain't two better guys to hunt with in this world than Don Dunlap and Kitty Mason. The best. Yep. The best. And I have aggravated them to death. Oh, they're awesome. And I cut them no slack. Uh, you can't cut them kind of guys no slack. You no. know what I mean? No, you can't. And Randy Morgan them used to come up here, and Randy brings Engel up here, and fighting side, that old boy had fighting side. He's got that world champion ring, the one that trackman should have had that year i bred 53 females in a row and i learned something about that what buzz told me is going to happen i create a lot of rebreeds but what i'm saying i take him to the world hunt we get him in the finals well i'm here at the house ashley calls me it's more me and kevin and ashley and buzz and shit i got he called old son old boy i got old boy in got old boy and i was so sick of hearing about the old boy my ass <laughs> i said kevin Go get track. Man. Well, we can't hunt him. We've been breeding him every damn day. I said, I don't care. If you're not hunting him, I am. I'm, we're going to go take him down there. Hey, we get him down there. We walk him through it. Hey, just the way it works, you know. And Yeah. Uh, probably probably had a chance to win it, really, you know, but the way it was. But anyway, getting back at Randy and all him, Randy says, I'm going to bring Engel up. You don't care, do you? I said, no, he's on my turf. I said, I can aggravate him. Well, I didn't know he's bringing the other boy up. We get up, we're sitting at my table, Josh, where we are right now. And he's over there rolling that ring around, you know. <laughs> and I'm talking, and it's getting on my nerves. Randy and Kevin, they're all sitting there. Yeah. I said, hey, bud, it's bad enough you beat me. You got to roll that son of a bitch around. I call him the old, roller, uh, the old ring roller. And that guy, dang Morgan, went to lap and carrying on. And they ain't never let me forget that kind of shit. But that's the kind of stuff that coon hunting's done. You know, it's. Hey, I'm disappointed a lot of times, but I try to think of the good times to get me through, you know. And it's there's, a, there's ups and ups and downs in all. Oh of yeah, this. Josh. It's just like you say. You've had some great male dogs, and you've had them doing good. And I see you get pissed, and you know, and you sell one, or you, you know, what I mean, you just it's aggravating, you know. It is. It is. And and we all go through that. And I've been blessed. I I can keep a dog put together. And I don't know how I do it. It's just I do it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I try to pleasure hunting and keep their minds, you know. And, and, and John Wick, me and him agreed on one thing on stud dogs. I'm going to bring this up. A real stud dog, you can breed a bit, or you can have a bitch in heat. You could take a female in heat with track man at night. And I could be broke needing this money. And he's smelling rocks and whatever have you not. Go turn him loose. Come back, he'd breed that bitch. Yeah. Because I guess he just, you know how it is. He would rather go hunting. The trader was the exact same, same way. Same way. Yep. Me and Finley talked about that. Yeah. And and John Wick said a real stud dog would be that way. Yeah. That's one of the few things that me and that man ever agreed on. Me and his wife was the greatest. John, we had some differences. He didn't approve of me sometime in them casts. I got a little crazy, and he judged me in a pro hunt one time, and I was hunting a dog called Dynamite Dan, and there was a red bitch that was as good as ever walked, old Faith Ann. Yeah. And I got a little unruly. Uh, John took a little while to find my coon. I'm, I'm looking at him. I'm seeing him. And, you know, back then, 250 bucks was a lot to me. Oh, yeah. And we're in Mexico, Missouri, and I got a little ignorant. You know, I told him, I said, hey, Ray Charles could see this coon, you know, and <laughs> I just got a little ignorant and... Boy, he threatened to scratch me and all kinds of shit. And from that day on, we never got along too good. But he had a good leopard cur. Uh, he come from right over in Illinois, Jack Miles. Yeah. A very good dog. Uh, there was He didn't reproduce like he probably should have, but treated a lot of coons. And uh, A good Pete, leopard cur ain't going to reproduce because there's only been about one good leopard cur out of every 10 million made. Right. When I was raised, Josh, in Greenville, Illinois, there was a guy that owned a Goodyear tire shop, Ed Essen Price. He gave 10000 for a leopard cur bitch years ago. That's back when Jay Cox was hunting all the black dogs. That was a that, banker that all them. 80000 a day. That's right. She was a freak now, a freak. Old Jay Cox, I'll never forget them days either. 
I pulled up there one time, and I thought, who's this little sharp guy? He come out of there and opened the door up, and there come old Banker out of the back seat of that limousine he had. <laughs> and them Stoke boys all hunted for him, Johnny Ray, Carl, yeah. all of them, you know. I think they used one grand. I think they used one good dog to grand out everything they had. <laughs> How can you tell Black and Tans that he different? I used to tell Carl. They all look the same. <laughs> now, <laughs> Kurt, don't start that shit. I said, let me tell you something. Oh, Sheba made how many grand night bitches for you all? She was a coon dog, man. Yeah, it just takes one in the Black and Tan breed. Well, that's why I used to give them hell all the time. You know what I mean? They said, Kurt, you ain't right. Hey, let me tell you something. When DNA come around, they screwed up everybody, didn't they? <laughs> And I'm glad they did because they did. I went and bought a pup. I, I ain't going to say that. That happened in every breed. Every then. breed. It happened every in every breed. breed. I go and buy a pup out of a world champion bitch. My dad takes me out there. I'm excited. I'm not going to mention no names. I go and I pick this pup up. Well, when I got home and I got to counting up and my dad got to figuring up different people to have when she had to have about 18. <laughs> she was no more out of that world champion than nothing. And she wasn't worth a shit. My dad said, you learn anything? I said, yeah. Quit reading books and stay home and train what you got. That's right. And uh, that was funny. You know, I used to read them books, and I think, man, I need to go hunt with this dog. And I went down one hunt with Carolina, not Carolina Casey, uh, Bean Blossom Buck. I yep. always wanted to hunt with Carolina, yep. and I didn't. So I go down there, and, of course, one of them deals, like you said, Josh, wouldn't turn him loose, but had some pups he turned loose. Well, it's cold. I'm a kid, probably 13, 14. My dad hauls me down. He said, whatever you do, don't run your mouth. Be quiet. I had problems with that. We get down there. I'm froze to death. These pups wallered, but we were down there in rough country. Yeah. Today, looking back at it, they probably all had to do that down there. Yeah. But they wallered around. I said, hey, Dad, I'm froze. I've seen all I need. I don't need none of this shit. Piss that guy off, plumb off. Hey, uh, two weeks later, I want to go down and see Merchant. He's had a great, I mean, a nice son of a bitch. Old Bali and him back then. So my dad and his buddy, they load up a Ford truck, and Paul Harvey was selling that motor honey back then. Yeah. And that guy said, I changed all my old Ford, and I put that Paul Harvey motor honey in it. These guys was characters now. <laughs> so I jump in there, and we go down there, and they both say, hey, now, this merchant now choke us to death. Don't you get ignorant. <laughs> we go out there, and his wife, we're talking about James Merchant. James yeah, Merchant, yes, before sir. Bonnie. Now, yeah. before he married Bonnie, his original wife and his son was there, and they had a half-walker pit bull, Josh, the neatest dog that I thought he had on the place, yeah. which I knew better. We go hunting, and they're running the fox. Same deal. I'm froze. I was froze the last week listening to this shit. <laughs> I'm froze this week, and I told my dad, I said, hey, man, I'm ready. Merchant said, you want to go back to the house with my wife, stay there? I said, do I ever. So they truck me on back there. Merchant lets that shit run. Hey, they take me back there, and his wife was there, and I played with that half-hound pit bull, and me and his wife talked, and uh, Dad and Roy, they hunted God dang the daylight. You know, yeah. Merchant was going to do that. Oh, yeah. Tough individual, you know. He was. Had good dogs. But that's just kind of some of the crazy shit I've been involved in, you know. I, I was always blessed. If I seen a good dog, I wanted it, you know. Yeah. If I couldn't have him, and my dad always raves and hey, Kurt, you can't buy that dog. We need to go hunt with pups. We can buy those. Yeah. And I could never get that in my mind right away. And back when Arkansas River Crank was probably one of the, besides track, man, probably one of the loudest dogs I ever heard. Really liked him. Did he reproduce? No, not really. Uh, I went down there, went hunting with him, and just bought a baby pup. No luck there, and I tried. Of course, I tried everything to start one back in them days. You know, I, they told me you couldn't start one. I was going to damn sure prove to him I mm -hmm. could, you know. Hell, my dad had me run around and pups run loose, climb up shit, make them tree, talk to him, you know, look down <laughs> at him, get him treeing me. We got in a fight one time. We got he had a dog. I always had the best, and he always had the best. That old high sea dog was sailor bred dog, and he'd treat them coons. No mouth, not no big mouth, good locate, overbroke. If he's around a female, he wouldn't let him smell one. You couldn't get him to breed a bitch if he was there. But treat them coons. Yeah. Well, I was hunting. He was a running dog. And I went down and bought a female that I won walking with, old Sammy. And she was Maynard bred, double Maynard bred. And mean, but split tree all. And she wasn't mean, Josh, if they strike a track and run it together in there. Yeah. But if she ever got parked by herself, 
Don't come in there, Jack. So she was hurt. just like about every dog in the world today yes. that are in these pro classics. The longer and they're by themselves, the meaner they, they get. get. Yes. That's right. And, of course, I petted her and stroked her, and she lived in the house, you know. And I told you about eating up my buddy's dog. Yeah. I knew that wasn't way to go. And me and him, me and Mike, we got these spectators. They all know I just win Walker days, and Dad's had his, and Bing Morse, and the one that got me hooked up with Buzz, told Buzz about my goofy ass. Well, anyway, we go hunting, and he just knows that Sam, because C wouldn't miss much. Yeah. At all, hardly. I mean, and Sam didn't either. So she's got a big tree. Said, I told you that son of a bitch missed. Oh, boy, I mean, he's on me. I'd had enough. I cl- That's back when I could climb. I was pretty wormy. I climb up there, <laughs> and they're all on the ground. I said, I got him. I told you she had him. And I'd made a tree before that I knew she had, too. And that's where this argument started from there. Yeah. And uh, my dad, Daigle, goof as he was, and them guys standing there, I make that coon look. And he shoots about like I do, Adam. He just goes to shoot, and them guys said, Jerry, Jerry, you're going to kill that kid. He said, oh, shit, he'll be all right. You can't kill that idiot, son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, coon falls out, and I get down. And them guys never seen two guys like me in our life. I love my I can, dad. I can believe that. But we had a hard time hunting together, and I got a yeah. certain age. I wish these podcasts had been around whenever your dad was oh, killer. To have right. you and Jerry at the same table and just sit here and talk would be gold. It would be golden. Oh, yeah. I come home from school one time. I got to tell you this real quick. I was wanting a hunting truck. I was t- I was hunting behind the house. Couldn't go nowhere. My dad said, you got every coon killed behind the house. You're going to have to go somewhere else. Well, I didn't have no driver's license, you know? Yeah. So I come home. He goes to a farm sale, buys a Galaxy 500 Ford car. Well, the time I get home, he's got the back seat out of it, two chains in the back, and a set of mud tires. So it's in the shop. I get off the bus, and I go, and he say, hey, I got you something. You can start hunting. I had a bachelor down the road, Leonard Brave. He said, go pick up Leonard. He'll ride with me. You all can hunt around the country. Man, I go, I'm thinking of pickup, right, Josh? Yep. I get out of here, and here's this green canary <laughs> Ford with a white top, 390 in it. Got about eight miles a gallon. Of course, I run it hard. Hey, and that's and I, I had a pair of steel mop dogs, and my di- there were some dogs called Beechwood Willie. Right where Gretchen Wilson come from, right at their little old town over around Pocahontas and them over yeah. there. And this guy fed him cottage cheese and milk because he run a milk truck. And I go over there, and they was nice dogs. And he had a dog, and he told my dad, he said, hey, this is a coon dog, but kids have been throwing rocks and beating on him. He said, he'll eat a kid up. He said, don't let that boy of yours have this dog. So you might as well tell my old man that's the first thing he was going to go with him. <laughs> So he goes and gets him, hey, gets 500, brings him home, beautiful blanket back, look like these night heat dogs we hunt today. Yeah. Barney, I go out there to pen this, some of shine down, boy, tail down, I'm like, man, this ain't good. So I get him a few snacks, start feeding him about a week. Hey, he likes me. He makes, I told him, I'm going to take that dog. Well, be careful. So I do. And his buddies and him would come over, and they'd all go hunting because I'd aggravate him. I'd go take that old car, go hunting. I'd lay my coons in front of the shop. I'd have four or five, and them some would have excuses. Yeah. <laughs> but he was a steel mouth, and he was supposed to treat coons, you yeah. know. Yeah, I've had some real times, some crazy, you know what I mean? If I die tomorrow, Josh, I'm happy. You know what I mean? What the hell? Kurt? Probably be some guys glad, you know what I mean? Oh, there probably would be, but it wouldn't be me. I hear you, You know, guy. me and you, we argue, we fight, we cuss, we get in trouble, but... uh it's Ever just, since that first time I drew you, even you knew though, me. yeah, exactly. And so we've always known what we've, we were going to get out of Kurt Airy. And you have had some of the most successful stud dogs in the history of the Walker well, I, Reed. I thank you for that. Good Lord, and bless you, me. you got a beautiful place. I'm going to have to close this out. I'd love to sit here. We're going to do this again. We're going to have another well, I episode. I sure enjoyed of this. it, Josh. Yeah. You know, I, we kind of jumped around a little bit. I got a little excited. That's kind of the way I am. Kurt, that's the way we wanted you. Uh, this is called the truth, and we want the, the truth, truth, you know, and we want we want you as you are, Kurt. Yeah, my wife, she uh, wanted me to change. I said, what do you want to do the guy? Why do you want a guy to change when he's 60 years old? You know what I mean? Yeah. I always give her hell, you know. And But uh, 
I have tried to change. My granddaughter's been a blessing. Woke me up as much as anything. she's a sweetheart. She was with us that cast when we yes. drew, when we had old old uh, yep. duds and and Badco in that yep. cast. Yeah, she that was, was a fun. good time. You know what it I mean? It was. One thing about me, I am ignorant, but I will have a part of a coon dog sometime. Yep. You know what I mean? That's the way I try to be. No, nope. last three or four times I've drawn you, we've had shootouts and we've treated a lot of coons. Yep, we sure with have. good coon dogs. We've had a blessing. You know what I mean? Yep. Kurt, I've I'm enjoyed a- it, Josh, and. Uh, Anything I can do to help you guys, you, hey, I'm more than willing to help. We're going to get back on here. We're going to do this again. We're going to talk about Tree TV, and we're going to talk about some yeah, other stuff, Yeah, that was a blessing, too. too. Mr. Yeah. Lindemeyer was behind me 100%. And, uh, uh, yeah, I've had some real good times. I mean. Yeah. You're a pioneer in this stuff. All this stuff we're doing today, you guys did it first. So Yeah. Uh, you know how it is. I told you I made every mistake known a man kind of like my veterinary. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've got a good vet. He told me one day, he said, Kurt, I ought to know something. I made every mistake known to man. Yeah. He's been a blessing, too, to me. All good, right. A good houseman will have a good vet, too. You always remember that. That is true. All right. This is, first of all, thanks for joining us, Kurt. Thank you, Josh. Uh, this is Josh Michaelis with the Houndsman XP Truth Portion. Uh, the Truth Portion of the Houndsman XP Podcast. We're here with Kurt Aring. Uh, it's been great. It's been fun. We'll do it again. Thank you guys for listening. And aggravate that Finley, Josh. Oh, yeah, we'll get that Finley. I owe him another one. <laughs> All right. Have a good day. Thank you, Kurt, for joining us. And you guys tune in next Thank week. Thank you all too.